Welcome everybody to another episode of DWP Digital's podcast. My name is Stuart and today we're talking about our future payment service and the technology behind it all. And as always, hit the subscribe button now to make sure you don't miss an episode. So let's get started. Natalie and Nick, would you mind introducing yourselves? Yes, of course. So I'm Natalie Rea and I am the product lead within Digital Payment Services. I am responsible for um, the products that we build and we are looking to reimagine the payments estate that we have within DWP. So my role is ensuring that we build the products that meet the needs of the users and our agents to a standard and a quality um, for DWP. My experience um, really covers around 15 years um, of working in government. Um, that covers from customer services, um, IT support, channel shift and digital transformation projects. And I've been in the product space for the last five to six years. I've recently moved, I say recently, it's been nearly three years, um, to the department, to DWP, central government, and been working in payment services from the very beginning. I'm uh, Nick Cutting. I recently joined uh, digital payment services as a lead architect, uh, where I'm responsible for the end-to-end -end architecture on the, uh, the new payment service. Um, I've actually worked in the department over 35 years in IT, and interestingly enough, I was the original architect on our existing payment service, uh, which was 13 years ago. So I am revisiting old ground. Uh, my last role within the department was technical lead um, on one of our legacy services, uh, VMER, where we were responsible for replatforming 11 of the department's most business critical applications uh, onto a new modern technical platform and something that the department's had a number of goes at over the past 25 years. So that was uh, quite a big achievement uh, prior to coming to digital payment service. But obviously now I've moved on to uh, the digital payment service, as Natalie was uh, articulating at the beginning, something that is, uh, again, another significant challenge and role for me. Thank you both. So Natalie, can you give us an overview of your team and DWP's payment service? We are the biggest payer in the UK. We serve 22 million citizens, which makes up 34% of our total UK population. And we make around £177 billion pound in payments annually. And this actually generates a quarter of the UK back traffic. We are responsible for making sure that we deliver money on time and in the form that best works for our citizens and that they can use it in a way that helps address their specific needs. We're also the largest payment system in Europe and it's critical that we have a service that works in the best way, not just for our citizens, but also for our agents and services that make payments um, across the department. Future Payments has been born um, a couple of years ago and its purpose was to understand what we need to do as a payment service um, and not just looking at the needs of our agents and services and citizens today, but one that can move um, and, and be adaptable to the change coming that we see in the future in the, in the payments industry. We wanted a payment service that is, um, you know, looks at reducing cost and risk, but also increases like the resilience and simplicity and flexibility of payments to and from the citizen. We also wanted to create a better experience for our agents that use our service every day. And our teams are working together to develop future payments products and services. So Nick, can you tell us about the technologies we're implementing and our approach in terms of software and infrastructure? Before I get into the technologies, I wanted just to set the scene as to what we're trying to do uh, within the departments and technology in particular. So the department, Department for Work and Pensions, is on a journey where we're looking to modernise um, or digital services 
and in particular to support our business intent of providing uh, where appropriate our services digitally so that's the overarching uh, challenge for us on the on the technology side so what the department has done through our technical departments digital departments is that we have a number of key principles to support that intent of providing our services digitally so these are some of the key design principles so one of the key, the key ones is that it's going to be microservices based and by that we mean that we will develop small independently standing services that will provide one function or service uh, one of our other key principles is that it's going to be event based so rather than uh, building big batch based systems there is more events based so that information transactions apis uh, are moving around the service as we move forward i think we've already covered within this series of uh, podcasts about interfaces and integrations so one of the, the key design principles that it's predominantly api based and uh, uh, overarching all of these is that we are definitely looking at developing reusable services so rather than developing small independent services and one-offs that we are looking where we can to develop reusable services so as as Nat has articulated in payments we provide a payment service for the whole of the dwp systems so that's what we're trying to do and it's a good example of where we're providing a reusable service so rather than each of our systems having its own payment service we're developing one generic payment system so that's quite critical the other overarching principle is that uh, we're moving away from where we used to provide our uh, or host our services in-house within our own data centers we're now definitely moving to the cloud and one of our uh, key design principles is having it cloud hosted so we're looking to use things like people are aware of um, aws amazon web services uh, and some of the other uh, key providers, Azure and um, other one, one or two that I can't remember. So I'm just setting the scene before we get into the, uh, the the key technologies. So they're the key design principles. What the department has through the our, our main um, architecture community, we've got a number of reference architectures. So we've developed uh, an application reference architecture which describes um our applications uh, again uh, services based so we have an application reference architecture we also have a technical reference architecture so that's a more detailed technical level and articulates the or identifies the key technologies that we're going to be used using and the final one is we have something called the tech radar which is a series of recommendations to the department uh, about the, the again the, the the key software components and capabilities that we can use so really just setting out the uh, the frameworks and the design principles for uh, for developing our services to support that intent of providing our services digital, digitally so getting a bit deeper in terms of the software within the uh, the digital payment service our, our key software uh, languages are Java and uh, Node.js or Node JavaScript. So there are uh, two main languages, key languages. For Java, uh, we predominantly use the drop down, uh, sorry, the drop wizard framework. It's a light work framework for building APIs and web applications. And for, uh, for front end uh, development, we use the uh, the free market templating uh, language. On the Node.js development side, we use the um, Express framework. And it's interesting that obviously people have uh, um, who are digitally literate will be going why are we not using some of the more uh, modern and, and available ones things like react or view but our view is that uh, you know we're, we're looking to uh, provide generic services digital services to our citizens so the ones that are particular to us rather than ones that are available um, on the internet uh, that we've got more control about and gives us that flexibility and assurance of service as well on the operational side, we have a number of uh, monitoring and alerting tools. We use uh, Prometheus uh, and Grafana and Alert Manager. And again, that allows us then to, to have the flexibility about monitoring our services so we're not dependent on some commercially uh, procured software. I think the, the other final one 
uh, before getting on to the, uh, the actual hosting side is that um, we have a number of uh, databases, but the one that we, uh, we've elected to go with is MongoDB. That's um, what we would call a NoSQL uh, database. We have a, our background is probably using relational databases, but we think that moving towards the, the NoSQL database gives us more flexibility and control over our databases moving forward. So this is definitely moving into the new modern paradigm of doing development work. So I think it's worth exploring now about the how we actually support these services and actually how we host and what our uh, approach is. So uh, my experience is working with the department for the past 35 years is that uh, initially, historically, we used to provide um, our data centers in-house. So we actually had uh, five data centers in, in the old, old days where we used to provide all our benefit processing systems. Then in the late 90s, we, uh, we moved from an in-house to an out outsourced supplier. So we actually moved those. Uh, so we actually, that was service was provided to us uh, by uh, initially uh, EDS and then it was uh, Hewlett Packard. So it was definitely a, a, an outsourced model. And five years ago, we made uh, the decision to bring uh, the hosting back in house. So initially, uh, we provided again our own data centers and we refer to that uh, as being on premise hosting. But obviously, uh, the IT industry in general has been moving more into the cloud. And we have again made that decision that we will now move from uh, on premise hosting to in the cloud. And for me, based on you know that background where uh, we used to provide our own services and then we outsourced it. Moving into the cloud, which I do have some experience of, uh, for me is, is mind blowing. It's actually a quantum leap and um, the power and the flexibility and the cost efficiencies and the, the speed of delivery uh, is actually quite staggering. And uh, it is actually changing the delivery of IT and underpinning a lot of what is actually going on in the in the IT sector in general and it's quite exciting for the department to moving into that so on the within the department we actually have a number of cloud providers uh, so we don't just have them pick, pick one so we have amazon web services aws we have uh, azure and, and we still provide a number of our services in house as well some of our more secure ones in uh, on premise hosting in, in in oph on the payments uh, uh, for digital payments, we are predominantly using AWS and uh, the benefits for us uh, are significant. It's the, uh, first of all, the, 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 they provide a number of all encompassing services. So uh, when we when we go into AWS, they're providing all the wraparounds, uh, sort of the security frameworks, the uh, the operational frameworks to actually support those. So in terms of the the alerting, so a lot of that is given to you. And your trick, our, my trick as the being the lead architect, is making sure that we're using uh, the right services, that we're getting the right information, monitoring the right things, and then again from a security perspective, making sure we have the right we're, we're implementing the right security framework to make sure that our services are secure uh, but also so that people can access them in, in the in the appropriate ways the the, the real benefits for me uh, about using the, the cloud aws in particular is the uh, we you know we can start small we can if we so desire quickly then scale up when we when we've identified a way forward and uh, the, 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 one of the big things for us is the capacity on demand so that we can, you know, when we have quiet periods, we can ramp down our services. And then when we actually have busy periods, when we have lots of transactions, we can ramp up those services very quickly indeed. In the old days, when it was on-premise hosting, we would have to put uh, an infrastructure in place that what we would term that that should cope with the highest volume. So potentially you know we have a lot of kits but that kit is not being used uh, but we still have to pay for it it's capital expenditure with the cloud we can ramp up and ramp down those services depending on the volumes going through it very quickly and that leads to a much more cost effective approach and uh, that is significant for the for the department and, and another benefit is and again my experience is when we were putting when i was on the, the original payment service for the department uh, say 13 years ago, 
putting that infrastructure in place. You know, you literally started with a blank sheet of paper. And when you want to put some hardware in place, you've got to uh, procure it. You've got to get the funding for it. And then you have to implement it and deploy it into the, the data center. That could take months to actually do. Whereas something like using the, the cloud, it's literally available on tap. And again, I, I can't emphasize to me, but based on my experience, it's mind blowing the, the, the power and the flexibility. And it is a quantum change for the IT industry and something that the department is now really tapping into. And it's going to have significant benefits for us going forward, in particular that digital journey of providing our services digitally for the, uh, the British uh, public. Thank you, Nick. That's really informative. Lots of information there. How are we driving innovation and change within the banking industry? Are they open to change? And what benefits are there to working with the banking community? So the payments industry is evolving at pace and we're helping to inform um, a number of these industry changes, providing the direction by working closely with the key stakeholders in that space. We're expecting significant changes in that payments in the payments industry. And this is due to the introduction of something called the new payments architecture, along with um, ISO 20022, which is a new messaging format. And these are the biggest set of changes that the industry has seen in many, many years. These two key initiatives um, within the payments industry will alter the format and the schemes which underpay, underpin our payments today. And this is being led by Pay UK. But this will introduce huge opportunities that could really benefit our UK citizens and our internal agents and the way in which we deliver our payment service. I mentioned earlier in the in the podcast in one of the first questions that as the largest payer in the UK, we've been able to help shape the direction of these changes. We started out by holding a number of workshops with the key payment industry stakeholders. We shared our findings from our discovery that we did at the start of our, our transformation work early last year. We share our needs as a payment provider. And we've also shared the challenges and goals that we want to achieve within our vision for the future. The stakeholders that we met with along the way have been Pay UK, Focalink, along with our payment service provider and government banking services and a number of other government departments. And we've all pay, played a key part within our transformation journey. You asked about the benefits of working closely together with the banking sector. And just reflecting on that, we've really been able to influence this space and it's been able to open up a number of doors and opportunities and being part of regular working groups and consultations that potential changes for the future, we can start to influence and um, allow the needs of our users and citizens to be met. It can also allow us um, and hopefully will help solve some of the challenges that we see today within our current constraints of the um, schemes and formats that currently underpin the way that we make payments today. It's going to allow us to really benefit not just DWP, but our citizens as well. Reflecting on lessons learned, and this is something that we always like to do within in our own product developments and doing it in uh, the way in which we interact with um, the relationships in the private sector, uh, the banking sector and also other government departments. We found that DWP was ahead of the curve. We're further ahead in our transformation journey. We started it quite you know, a number of years ago and thinking about um, what it is that we need, not just today, but for the future. It's had its own challenges in allowing us to kind of have our voice heard at the very start, but in forming relationships with other government departments, we've actually found that we all have the same problems when it comes to some of the challenges for our citizens. So we're able to share our research, share our learnings in how we've um, conducted that research and actually work together to solve the problem and come together to form one voice in influencing the payments industry. So it's been an exciting journey and we're still continuing to have this um, ongoing um, two-way feedback 
and being part of a number of consultations and working groups to influence the changes for the coming new payments architecture. So I think uh, historically, previously, uh, the banking industry was definitely seen as being um, conservative and limited in the number of services. And even now, a lot of these old established banks are still using very old uh, technology and legacy based systems. So uh, they have that as that base. But now, because of the things we've been talking about in terms of the, you know, the cloud hosting and innovation, there are a lot new challenges to the banking service and uh, sector in general. So there is a lot of innovation going on. So what we're doing in the department is that uh, Obviously, obviously, as we previously articulated, we're actually quite a big user of the, the banking sector. So we are trying to influence and be involved in that conversation. So I think at one level, that's our new approach. The we were what myself and Nat were outlining before the reference architecture, those design principles of microservices based and APIs, they're meant to underpin so that as these new banking innovations come through that we can intercept with those um, in a much more cost effective flexible uh, timely fashion so at this stage we are engaging with the banking sector we are aware of what is going on and we're working with them to identify those uh, innovations which will support the department moving forward in a cost effective way and again i think it's you know again for the banking sector is quite a significant almost boring on a, on a quantum change for them so it's quite exciting for the banking sector and then for us as a department making sure that we can align and use those services which will provide the best services to the uh, to our citizens and our clients uh, who use our services our strategy approach services and systems have all undergone different levels of change in recent years what has been the most significant change for the Future Payment Service and its team? Over the last um, few years, we've started to see our strategies come to life within digital space. So we've heard a lot throughout the podcast around the application reference architecture and bringing that to life within digital payment services through the Future Payments project. But we've also seen the business strategy come to life a little bit more and we've been working closely with our colleagues to really understand the common activities that the business fulfill across the department. So this has really helped um, influence and shape the future payment service and really validate our discovery findings um, at the very start of our journey um, two years ago. So when we talk about significant change and improvement within the, the last few years and any changes that we've seen, it's not necessarily um, directly changes to payment services, but it's just validating um, our case for change and our reason for doing this and how important it is that we need to be able to deliver a payment service um, that not just works for, for today, but also for the future. So it allows us to um, create that industry leading and intelligent payment system that allows us to, to pay the right amount on the right day to the right person but also allows us to um, improve the experience for our agents as well. So what's next for future payments? What's in the development pipeline? So digital payment services um, transformation journey is something that will be a multi-year uh, project. We have been making some great progress over the last couple of years. We've run um, a huge in-depth design thinking um, discovery, looking at the, the different payment types and their journeys in which we make and manage and also um, in, the, in the coming months, um, how we also receive payments into the department. It's been a busy year, lots of interaction, not just within the department, but externally with our banking sector colleagues and our government banking service colleagues and other government departments. Um, we're going to continue that, that interaction and um, the joining up of sharing research and findings um, and we're currently working on um, delivering um, a minimum set of um, payment capabilities that require us to make and manage a payment. We're also working towards our vision to create an industry leading and intelligent payment service that allows us to pay the right amount on the right day to the right person. 
This will allow us to make sure that our citizens who are entitled to welfare payments can confidently depend on our modern and resilient payment system. It aims to deliver exceptional service to its users and it will be um, responsive, intuitive and adaptable to the changes that we see coming in the industry over the coming years. So just before we end, what has been the biggest learning from working on future payments? My biggest learning so far, um, I've got previous experience of working um, on the department's payment system. So as Natalie was bringing out the, the, sc the scale and size of volume um, of our services is significant. And the, the critical under underlying philosophy is that, you know, we can't lose a payment. We need to make sure that we make uh, our payments on time and securely to uh, our customer base. That's quite critical. So um, I've got previous experience of working on uh, in this area. So for me, it's building on that. So to make sure that the services we do build are secure, uh, can cope with the volumes going through them. Now, we've actually started developing uh, some of those services capabilities already. So we're starting to develop things like uh, bank validation, remittance, uh, calendar services. And I think we've made an excellent start. And, and also we're proving to the department that this new reference architecture um, is the way forward, uh, coupled with the some of those key design principles of microservices, event-based uh, uh, you know, transactions, uh, cloud hosting. So I think we've made an excellent start. And uh, the, the thing for me now is to actually build on that and to, to build uh, a real capability to support the, the department and its new aspiration of being you know, digitally available so that our claimants can access our services over the, uh, over the internet. So I think uh, that's the, the key learnings. There is a positive that it is the right way forward. And now it's actually about building it at scale, both in terms of the volumes and the, the functions and services. So from a personal perspective, um, biggest learnings, I would say, it, it's probably not just this project because my whole time within DWP has been within payments on, on this piece of work. So um, my whole experience of DWP has, has been payment services. Um, I would say that my biggest learning is just how big of a scale and, and complex th the payment world is. And it's been kind of my um, goal to really expose that and also be um, an ally for those joining us um, that may feel the same as well when they're first joining the project. But that being said, it's also such an exciting place to work in. Um, we talked earlier about the, the biggest set of changes that the, that the payments industry has seen in years and just being part of that, you know, gets me so excited um, and, and, you know, really trying to articulate really the, 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 the vision that we're trying to achieve and the journey that we're on. It, you know, it, it's exciting, but it, it has its, its hiccups along the way, but it's um, been really, really rewarding knowing that you, you know, solving problems for, for real people just is such a really nice place to be um, involved in, and work within. So that ends our podcast for today. Hit the subscribe button if you want to make sure you don't miss our next episode. And I'd like to thank Natalie and Nick for taking part today. I've certainly learned a lot about our future payment service and I hope you did too. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time on the DWP Digital Podcast.